It's the question, how much tax do you have to pay when you flip? I get asked three main questions. How do I find discounted deals? How do I find money? And what tax do I have to pay? And often followed up by, I'm not gonna do it if I have to pay tax. So can we just start first with flipping and what's good about flipping? Should be about a 20% markup. So if you sell a property at 500 grand, you're probably gonna be making around 100 grand profit in one deal. That's not a year's worth of work. No way, absolutely not. So you can see you can make serious amount of money flipping and why it's worth it. So don't let the idea of tax put you off, get informed though. Right, let me introduce myself. You probably know me if, if you're one of the people who have been like, Suze, I have been like binging your videos, then of course you know me already. So I'm sorry for the introduction. But if you are brand new to me and this is the first time you've landed on my channel, then really good welcome. Straight speaking, 45 million pounds worth of property sourced for 30 million quid over 200 deals i don't tell you it's going to be like super easy without giving you the detail it's definitely going to be a bit of hard work but financial freedom is completely possible i'm five foot two i live here in bristol it's my home in bristol uh, and i also live uh, in barcelona i bought a place for cash for my birthday a few years ago it's near the sea and i live there half the time that is pure financial freedom. And if I can do it, you 100% can do it. And right now I'm teaching my son to do it, which is so cute. We have proper mentoring sessions. So I create these videos so that, the kind of the videos I would have liked to have had 10, 20 years ago. I started about 15 years ago in property and I've created a brilliant website for you guys. I've been teaching people for about 10 years since a lady called Wendy said, could you t teach me? And I'm going, who? <laughs> who do you mean? <laughs> oh, me. And I found I loved it um, because in order for us to grow to that scale, I had to really pay attention to what was happening in the business, understand the whole business, the strategy, the, the kind of conversion rates of deal sourcing and finding investors. So actually it's beautifully, it's like a turnkey, this business. If you know what to do, you will, and put the work in, you will succeed. And I've seen it time and time again. So have a look at my website. It's called thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk. Everything is immediate download because I would have wanted that as well to teach you how to succeed in property. So there you go, there's the introduction. So you know I'm not a financial advisor, you know I'm not an accountant, so I'm not qualified to give you advice, I'm just telling you what I know. You got two options to buy property in order to flip. You can buy it in your personal name as kind of yourself, Susanna Cole, or you can buy it in a limited company, which is set up. Now, I get my accountant to set up my limited company and registered with your SIC code, SIC code, as a property trader, as a trader, because that is going to be your mechanism for that particular company. So if you own properties in a limited company, I wouldn't advise you to a flip in the same limited company, I definitely suggest, as my accountant did to me, that you have a separate flipping limited company because it's a different type of activity. If you know that you're going to flip like a lot, and I 100% advise you to do so, at one point I had 30 flips on the go at the same time. They were like airplanes, you know, some were lifting off, some were being conveyanced, some were just landing and hadn't yet been bought, some were being renovated. It's quite hectic, but it was also quite good fun then definitely you wanna be flipping in, in a limited company, a corporation. So if you're doing that as a limited company, you'll be paying corporation tax, but if you're flipping in your personal name, you'll be paying income tax. I kind of call it capital gains tax, but it's basically income tax. And there's some allowances, so you don't need to pay tax on everything, ready? And currently, uh, if you're flipping as a corporation, corporation tax is 19%, whereas income tax, so, so let's let's go back to my example. You made a hundred grand profit, yes. Well, you've got to pay 19% tax. So you pay 19 grand to the government. You're paying for schools and hospitals. Thank you very much for our community. And then you're retaining 81,000 pounds net after tax. Still pretty good, isn't it? You might do a few of them every year. <laughs> How about doing five of them? <laughs> Over 400,000 pounds after tax? That would do. You're not even doing one every two months. And then income tax is banded if you're a lower rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer, but typically it's going to be more than the 19%. Because almost certainly you, uh, if you were to flip repeatedly, you're going into the higher rate um, tax and why pay extra tax? One little aside though, there is what's called the capital gains allowance if you're doing it as a human being, Susanna Cole, not Susanna Cole Limited, uh, and that at the moment, you, you, you're allowed to, to make a capital gain. So you buy an asset and you sell an asset 
and the gain is called the capital gain. And at time of filming, you're allowed £12,300 free before they start to tax you on 12,300 and a penny. So often the accountants will tell you to do one a year in your personal name to get that 12,300 pounds and then they'll tell you to do the rest in your limited company. That's the advice I get. However, remember you, you're almost certainly if you're gonna be flipping, moving into the higher rate tax uh, and at the time of filming, that's 28%. So you got 19% versus 28%, which is why most people tend to flip in a limited company and pay corporation tax. Also downsides, or well, it doesn't bother me, but it does bother some people, is uh, when you flip personally, you have to submit the tax return straight away, or pretty much straight away, you have to pay tax within 60 days. I don't mind that, because I've kind of got to the maturity that I'm not using money that should be earmarked for tax. In my early days, I'm gonna fess up, I was using every bit of money going, and then you'd get to the tax moment, you'd be like, oh, how am I gonna pay that? Whereas now, and this is really good financial advice for you, or really good management advice for you. Now, every single week, my bookkeeper works for me. She puts aside the VAT money, because um, I've got a VAT registered company as well. She puts aside the tax money, and it just goes into a different bank account. I never even think of it as mine, so I just don't, I don't fret at tax paying time. But in the early days, I think everybody does that. Not, you shouldn't, but I think we all do, but it's really good practice to put your tax aside. So for me, it doesn't bother me that I have to pay as a human being, as a personal person, I don't, it doesn't bother me, I have to pay the tax within 60 days. Whereas if you're doing a flipping in a limited company, you pay your tax nine months and a day after your year end finishes. Well, I personally would still stick the tax aside, but some people will use that money to trade again. To me, that just provides risk and stress you don't need. And then of course, although it sounds like it's super obvious to pay uh, to flip in a limited company, that's the corporation tax. And then in order for you to get the cash out, to go and, you know, <laughs> I don't know, spend it on a holiday, you're still gonna be paying tax again for when it, it gets paid out to you. And, and typically you'll plan that well in advance uh, and you might look at dividends, you might look at um, bumping up your pension. You know, there are numerous strategic ways of being very tax efficient with those drawings if you wanna actually benefit from them personally. And which is why you wanna work a ahead of the game with a really great accountant. So is that it then? Is, is, that, is that us? That's the only tax we need to think about. Nah. <laughs> There's also tax when you buy. Uh, and this tax is, stays the same whether you're buying in a limited company or as a personal human being. So it won't make any difference for your choice on how you're gonna flip. It's called a uh, stamp duty. Uh, and uh, it depends on the value of the property. There's kind of 0% up to certain value, then there's like next percent up, then next percent up. So do check the government website just in case at time of filming it's changed. But there are a couple of ways that you can either not have to pay stamp duty or get out of it. There's something called the first time buyer's relief. Now the chances are you're probably not a first time buyer, but you get 0% at the moment up to point of filming of up to 300 grand. And there's also something called multiple dwellings. Now I've done this multiple times and that is when you are buying linked properties. I'm not gonna go into the detail of it because it seems a bit complicated. It's, it's actually quite easy to understand once you've read it a few times. But if you were to buy the properties individually, typically they will cost more in stamp duty than if you buy them collectively. And that's because of the different bandings. And so if they're linked through leaseholds or freeholds, and the way that I've always benefited from multiple dwelling relief is when I've bought a block of flats. Like, and that doesn't sound, that you know, that sounds more fancy than it is. Four flats, six flats, then I pay a lower rate of stamp duty because they're all linked together. Your lawyer should know all about that, but obviously always inform your accountant what you're doing, just in case they're like, hey, remember about this so do not be put off by the fact that you've got to pay tax um, it always despairs me when I hear people say and, and I, I hear it far more than I want to hear it actually oh, I'm not gonna flip because I have to pay tax you only pay tax when you're flipping on profit on the main big tax so you know be glad of what you've got cup half full rather than what you had to give away cup half empty plus you're paying for schools and hospitals so you've got an entry tax which is called stamp duty and then you've got the exit tax which does is the one to really think about whether you pay to, uh, flip in a personal name or a, a limited company typically one a year in your personal name then the rest in a limited company but obviously check your situation with your accountant 
and that's either called um, kind of income tax or capital gains tax. I, I call it capital gains tax, or it's uh, as a human being, or it's corporation tax if you're doing it in a limited company, which is just about the profit your company's made. It's not terrible. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had n numerous years where I've paid six figures in tax. Would I prefer to have that money? Probably. It's all part of being part of a community. So for me, obviously, you, I work in advance with my accountant. I talk to them what I'm going to do. They help me decide which vehicle is the best vehicle. And then I look at it cup half full. I've been so grateful and glad to have been able to make great money in property. I just get my bookkeeper to pay the tax and I just don't look at how much has gone out. So don't let it put you off at all. Just be well informed and work with your accountant. Right. You know you can do it, can't you? So don't let things hold you back. Good luck to you. You wanna make a shed load of cash relatively fast? That's a buy to sell strategy. Download my buy to sell pack written for you guys. Everything I know popped into there for you.